What is up? What is up? What's up? What's up? This is the J. Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, June 21st, 2016. It's also National Yoga Day. As you've probably noticed, I am doing this podcast on my phone instead of on my usual setup. I'm recording this at 5.30 in the afternoon. You know, I actually woke up early this morning did some productive stuff, but then I'm like, oh shit, I'm supposed to do a podcast, because it's Tuesday, but then I had to go to school. Hey, what's up? I'm recording the podcast on my phone this time. No, 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 you're fine, I'm just, uh, I just feel like taking it easy right now, so I'm going to just record it right here. Okay, you want me to shut the door? No, 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 it's, it's, it's fine, I was... I was chilling. Okay, I was singing songs about that. That's that. That's fine. You gave the listeners something to enjoy. My three listeners, something to enjoy. I think they finally heard your voice for the first time. I'm singing a song about a cat. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm just gonna do it in here. I'm just gonna chill. You're not. You're not bothering me. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I just got back from the gym, and. uh I feel really good, but for the first time all day, I'm finally laying down and chilling out, because pretty much my energy has been through the roof all day, and it was so through the roof that I actually only used half a scoop of my pre-workout. Let me tell you about this, these supplements I got. Um, Since the last podcast, I have been killing it. I have been killing it at the gym, all right? Um... There's this, I guess I guess you could call them a small independent company. They don't sell their products everywhere. They are called TLM Research. And they were having a flash sale. It was 40% off all orders over $100. Now, usually I don't partake in that kind of stuff because I'm not super affluent. But I was like, you know what? I could actually use some supplements outside of the whey protein that I just recently purchased. I got a five-pound bag of whey protein for $35. It's EAS. I think it's good stuff. It's one scoop has plenty of, uh, one scoop has plenty of grams of protein in it. So I'm set over there and I get enough protein in my regular diet already. So I'm like, you know what? I want to get serious again, but I need to add some more amino acids and whatever BCAAs, whatever all that stuff is Gatorade on steroids. So I got some pre-workout because I had heard from some very reliable sources that this was very good pre-workout. It's called Meth Lab. And I got the strawberry kiwi flavor, so I got that. And then I got this stuff called Relentless, which is you take it during your workout. So I got pre-workout, during workout, which, you know, can also spill over to post-workout. And then I bought a little uh, little shaker bottle. It was like $6. It just to put me over $100. And then, uh, you know... After all the discounts and everything, I think it ended up being somewhere between sixty and seventy dollars. So I got a just over a month's worth of really good shit, really good supplements, and I've just been killing it at the gym lately, and I've been loving it so far. It's only been a couple days, so I can't give an official statement, but so far I'm digging it. So big shout out to TLM Research for making good supplements. Maybe if the fitness portion of my media takes off, I would be happy to endorse you or sponsor you, or you sponsor me, whatever. Do some ads on this podcast. So yeah, I'm back into weightlifting, everybody. I'm trying to get serious with it again, and it's been going good so far. Um, What else has been going on? While we're on the subject of activity, sports, NBA Finals... So yeah, I was really hoping the Cavaliers would win, and they really delivered. That was easily one of the best Game 7s I'd seen in a long time. Like, I can't remember the last time I saw a Game 7 that good in my whole life of 25 years. Not that I would remember one at the age of one or two or three, but I thoroughly enjoyed that game. We closed the bar early that night, so I, I just basically just watched the game while closing up with the managers sipping beer and uh, just enjoying LeBron just get lit up 
and seeing him just dominate, like beating Golden State after their insane season, beating them in their own turf on Father's Day. So, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that, especially after watching Steph Curry lose his cool all that all this time. I mean, you can be humble and chill so much, but if you're among the great or whatever, at some point you're going to lose your cool. It doesn't matter how calm, cool, collected you are. At some point, you're going to lose your cool, and then everybody's going to shit on you. So, congratulations, to Steph Curry, for finally being normal. I can't I can't even talk shit on him. I, I, I respect him. I hate his shoes. I don't know what the hell's up with those. He didn't. They didn't win a single game after he released those New Balance looking motherfucking shoes. The 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 internet memes roasting those shoes were the best I'd ever seen. You know, he, he practically wore dad shoes. Ugh. And it comes with like a a side cell phone butt belt clip. You know, I can't even talk right. I I'm still on the pre workout high. I still got ants on my skin. Like, I still feel it. I took it 15 minutes before, and then I worked out for about 30, 40 minutes. I would have stayed longer, but it started getting crowded. And it's always funny when I leave, like, a minute or two right after somebody else walks in. They're like, oh, this guy must hate me. He's leaving. I'm like, no, you just happened to walk in as I was finishing. But, yes, you kind of did speed up my process of leaving. Because I don't care who you are, what you look like, how big you are how new you are. I hate working out around people. It's not that I'm self-conscious or anything. I just, it's a very, it's a very personal, intimate thing for me to work out. So I like to just do it by myself. I'm so used to doing it by myself. It's like, it's like jerking off in front of other people at this point. Like, I just can't do it. You know, that, that, that's how important it is to me. I like to just do it alone. But all right. So, um, yeah, this is my last week of summer school, and then I'm on a break, um, and that's another reason why I'm kind of doing a bare bones podcast, is uh, I need to be studying, or something to that effect, for a final, which I'm probably going to take this Thursday, but today was the last class, tomorrow's a free day, you can take the exam tomorrow, but if you're like me, you need to take as much time as you can to procrastinate, I mean study, and go take it as, uh, not as late as you can before it closes, because it's open from, like, Wednesday afternoon to Thursday night. Usually I don't wait till the very last minute. I do it towards, like, I wait, usually I wait till the last day, but I do it during, like, the middle of the day or, like, in the morning or something. But anyway, um, they put out a new Resident Evil demo. It was only for uh, PlayStation Plus members, I think. I don't think you can get it unless you're a PlayStation Plus member, but yeah, it's called like like the something beginning evil hour, whatever beginning hour it had a very PT Silent Hill feel to it, it was first person, you go up to stuff you respond to it, it wasn't third person it wasn't over the shoulder couldn't see your character at all unless they like reached for something, but yeah it was very Silent Hill like, where if you or PT like you. I don't know if you've ever played PT, but that is the scariest fucking demo that PlayStation ever put out. In fact, I don't even think you can download it anymore, but once you've downloaded it off the PlayStation Store and you kept it, never deleted it, it's still yours to play. You just, like, wake up in a room and then you walk through a house that's first person, and there's certain ways... And this is the same thing with Resident Evil 7, the uh, demo, which is available for pre-release or pre-ordering, but it's still, like in development, I guess, so you can't really gauge what it's going to be like, but you just walk around the house, and you interact with stuff, and there's certain sequences where if you do it, it, uh, it creates different outcomes, where you can either be attacked in the hallway, you can be attacked at the door, if you do things in a certain order, this, that, or the other, it triggers different outcomes, so sometimes you don't know what to expect, it's not, it's not as linear as it seems. So it's very creepy, but I was a little disappointed by how it ended, because the guy just, spoiler alert, you just, you get the key to leave, because you're supposed to get out of the house, you leave the house, and right as you open the door and you see the nice, beautiful outside world, you just hear like a weird laugh, 
and then the guy grabs you by the shoulder and he says, Welcome to the family, and he punches you in the face. And this looks like the kind of guy that you could overpower, but I guess you're just so scared shitless that you couldn't even overpower him. But the scariest part of the game, or the scariest part of the demo, is when you find the key, and then you're, as you're walking towards the doorway to another room, you see him just walk past. He just, like, stumbles past. He doesn't even look at you. He just walks past casually. And you're like, shit. Like, why am I following him? You just see him the first time, and you can't interact with him because he's too far away. But he just casually walks by, just moseys on down the hallway. And uh, you walk through the rest of the house. You don't see him anywhere. But then as soon as you reach that door, there he is. There to jump you. You can acquire a hatchet if you uh, do a certain sequence correctly, but you can't use it. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about Resident Evil 7. They're like rebooting something, or they're trying to really bring back the survival horror aspect to it instead of it being a third-person action shoot 'em up I mean, don't get me wrong, Five and Resident Evil 5 and 6, they had their moments when they were scary or creepy or just... I, I prefer to use the term intense. They weren't scary, but it was just intense, you know? The level of difficulty it was to kill some of these things, just being purely outgunned or out overpowered, it was intense, but it wasn't scary. And then Resident Evil 4, which I'm replaying right now, just for fun, because it's summer. I forgot who I explained this. It was probably one of my coworkers that tried to say, oh yeah, it's summertime, it's time to play Resident Evil again. And they're like, why is that a summer ritual? And I'm like, well... In the summer of 2005, that's when I got it. And I played it all summer, so it's a summer thing for me. Just like people go swimming, I play Resident Evil 4. I know it actually came out in January of 2005, but I didn't get it till June. But you better believe I'd been on top of knowing as much as I could about the game. I took that game so seriously when I first bought it. I did so many things wrong, because I, I overthought it. I didn't just play it. I was like, oh, am I supposed to shoot the window before I jump through it? I don't want to hurt myself. Oh, shit. I, I, I released the dog from the trap. Is he going to go tell the villagers I'm here? I should probably shoot him. But of course, you can't shoot him. He doesn't do anything. You release him and he helps you fight El Gigante. That's it. Um, so, yeah. I guess the last thing I can talk about is... um. The moment you've all been waiting for is... Uh, if you haven't already seen it on any of my pages or anything... I am releasing the Raptor Riot Sabotaged EP Monday, June 27th. I had just been dying for it to be a June release. And luckily, through the grace of God, it will be released in June on the 27th. So I should be getting the tracks this Friday. And God forbid there's any kinks that need to be worked out. It'll be done over the weekend, but it'll be ready for a full release on Monday, next Monday. So by the next podcast, it'll have been out for a day. But in the meantime, I currently have two songs out, which is half the EP. But the first song, Riot Starter, is actually going to be re-released because it's going to be remixed and remastered because I I released it last October, I think. And uh, my engineer has acquired some new abilities and he's going to put that into the mix to keep it consistent with the rest of the tracks. And then I also have a new song that I put out like about a week ago called The HCL. So that song's out as well. To me, that is the least new metal song on the EP, but I'm still excited about it. I've gotten some good feedback on it. So feel free to listen to that on the Jay Dennis channel. You just gotta go to the Raptor Riot playlist. All right, let's see. And, um, yeah, there's definitely going to be a music video, too. Um, I, I've been asking around for people that want to be in it, still looking for places. It, it's not easy to find a place to do a music video when you're busy with school and work and shit, but it's, it's going to happen. This EP is way too important to me to not have some sort of music video for it. I've always wanted to do a music video and this is definitely going to be the music that captures that moment. Um, 
but all right, so I hope you enjoyed this mini podcast. I hope you realize that if I don't have it set up on the high-tech equipment that I do every week, that I call it a mini podcast because I don't quite have 50 minutes to an hour to fill right now. And uh, I'll probably be back next week with the full one. Not even probably, I will be. I will be back next week to, to uh, normal. I would rather just put one out like this than not put anything out at all. Because, you know, I know I have three or four of you listening, and it means the world to me. And I'd rather just consistently put out material every week, regardless of the quality. But as much as I can, I will give you the best quality I can. So um, I guess I'll go through some other recordings and add them to the end of this one for any of my other tidbits of the weeks gone by. I'll talk to you next week. Peace! You ever see a car called the Subaru Baja? I think this car maybe came out 10, 15 years ago, but it's, it just looks like that mini... Oh, it looks like a really shitty version. It looks like a El Camino had sex with a... with a midget um, SUV. So... Yeah, it it looks like an SUV, but it's got a bed. But the SUV that was part of that sex was uh, petite, just like my cat. (laughs) And, um, yeah, it created this monstrosity of a car called a Baja. And I guess just like the Baja men, this car's success was limited and was ultimately a joke. So, yeah, Subaru Baja. I should probably look it up and be like, oh yeah, that's how old this car actually is, instead of just guessing. But I don't know, it's just like the, uh, what is that, the Pontiac Aztec? Another car that gets a lot of shit? Ugh. I don't know, but most cars these days, including the one I'm driving, you know, a Ford Focus, I I just feel like they're all shit. Like, they're never really hitting their true potential. You know, the first car I owned was a Jeep, Cherokee, that was released the same year I was born, 1991, and that thing was tough, and I don't mean like, oh, that looks tough on you, I mean like, it was tough, the parts were tough, the shit didn't snap off, you didn't think, you didn't feel like, if you got a little aggressive with your, with your gadgets behind the steering wheel that you were gonna break it, like, cars used to have much more resilience, because the parts actually had integrity. But now, you snap something, you gotta pay 50 bucks to get a door handle replaced. Unless you're like me and you go on Amazon, you spend $3 and install the thing yourself. Although there was a time when I had a Corolla, which was a 2001, where the, uh, and this happened to all Corollas, uh, the fucking heat and erosion and everything just caused the uh, door handles to just snap off over time. The plastic would wear and the door handle would snap. So I bought a new one on Amazon for like, what, a dollar or two? Instead of 50 bucks from a dealership. But unfortunately, I couldn't install that one myself. I had to go pay someone to do it. But at least I didn't pay 800% for uh, a door handle. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Ah! Good afternoon. You know, just out here in the rain. Um, yeah, Ty Lopez is a con. Anyway, so I was at Publix the other day and one of my worst nightmares came to realization as, uh, you know, you go to any corporate chain and they're always playing like the most hacky, generic, you know, classic songs or modern songs or whatever. I'm not saying small businesses don't do that, but it's, it, you're most likely going to go into a great clips or a, or a a Publix, which is a supermarket down down south, and you're gonna just hear like, "Don't go break it, huh?" Well, I actually heard something a lot worse. I heard "Sweet Fucking Caroline," and I'm like, I, I just heard it, and I was just like, "Whatever," you know. I thought about the Bill Burr bit, which was hilarious. Um, but y- you know, when you go to a karaoke bar or a, a piano dueling bar or whatever like that. It's to be expected that that song's going to come up and every white person in the crowd is going to go, you know, blah, blah, blah. But at an actual supermarket, like, people are actually getting down to this fucking song while they're picking out their green beans. I I walked down the canned vegetable aisle 
and I'm just like, oh god, here it comes. And these two ladies, like in their 30s or their 40s, they actually went like, oh, here it comes! Bah, bah, bah. And I literally, at that moment, like just shot the most horrific look at one of them and went, ah! Oh. Like, not even a care in the world of what they would think. The fact that somebody actually sang along to the song in a supermarket just scarred me for the rest of my my time. And as I'm walking away from them, she repeats it on the second part. You know, and she's like, bah, bah, bah. <clears throat> Anyway, sorry if I perforated any eardrums or anything, but, uh, yeah, that was my terrible Publix story. I should probably quit going to that Publix because it seems like a lot of unfortunate shit happens there. Like with Jimmy, the lottery guy, and uh, Queen McBitchin, the Caroline lady. Ugh.